I'm going to be doing a series of lessons on uh, studies in the scriptures, and this has been a long process getting to this point. Um, you know, we have been on a long journey. Um, we've um, come from a long history of heretical teaching in our in our lives. Um, I was raised in a hyper Arminian background, um, teaching the free will of man, which, by the way, the free will of man really is a is a um, another representation of humanism, the exaltation of the creature. I will not have God to rule over me. That is what <coughs> Arminian teaching, in a nutshell is, but we're just going to be looking at a few passages of scripture this morning that will certainly uh, dispel any notions that man has a free will, and it will affirm the notion that for the elect, that God has secured their eternal redemption before the foundation of the world. One of the things that is so important about understanding <clears throat> the decree of God for his elect as it relates to their um, predestination, their justification, and their ultimate glorification is that it pretty much negates uh, any thought of man being able to uh, make himself acceptable to God by making a decision for God. That's why in today's preaching you don't see sin taught. The law is not given to man. Repentance is not taught. Um, the only thing that's taught is, you know, if you fill out this decision card and make a decision for Jesus, then you're one of his children, which that is not, that is far, far from the truth. A person cannot come to Christ if Christ does not um, do an effectual work in their heart to show them, first of all, their utter depravity and their utter sin. And then uh, that comes through the Holy Spirit's drawing a person to God. And then secondly, a person um, recognizing who Christ is, he is our great high priest, he is the one who died for his elect, and because of his perfect sacrifice, we are made acceptable to God through Christ, and that is taught in Hebrews. I'm going to start with just reading a passage in the 93rd uh, Psalm. The Lord reigneth, he is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also is established, that it cannot be moved. Thy throne is established of old, thou art from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord, the floods have lifted up their voice, the floods lift up their waves. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. Thy testimonies are very pure. Holiness becometh thy house, O Lord, forevermore. So we see here that uh, it takes us back to the thought of the flood. During the time of the flood, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Grace is unmerited favor. Uh, God showed mercy. God showed grace to Noah. And uh, because he didn't have anything to merit of himself, Noah, God chose to show him grace to all the other people on the face of the earth. How do we know that God showed Noah unmerited favor? Well, we know that Noah was born and conceived in sin like everyone else. And something happened in Noah's heart to embrace 
and cling to uh, the truth that he needed a mediator. He needed someone to stand in his stead uh, to bring about his redemption, to bring about his reconciliation to God. To He was born again, not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of man, but of God. And God sent a flood on this earth and destroyed all those who he did not show grace to. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. We see in many, many passages uh, in the Bible that God teaches that we are, uh, if we are God's elect, that we embrace the doctrine of election, that we embrace the fact that we were chosen before the foundation of the world. In the 10th chapter of John, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Now, it says also that a stranger they will not follow. The fourth verse there, speaking of the sheep. Um, fifth verse, a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Um, the voice of strangers are those who are teaching the Armenian heretical doctrine that man has a free will. Um, Jesus said in seventh uh, verse of chapter ten, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door by man, me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find the pasture. And verse eleven says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Notice there he didn't say the good shepherd gives his life for every single soul on the earth without exception. And then he goes on and says, verse 14, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. Those who are not his sheep do not know Christ. Those who are not his sheep, in another passage in the 6th chapter of John, Christ was the strongest teacher of election in the Bible. He was stronger on election than Paul or uh, Peter, even though they were very strong. Jesus was the greatest teacher on the fact that his people were given to him by the Father. And we can see that in the 6th chapter of John, he says, the 29th verse, Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. So the very act, the very faith, the ability to believe upon Christ is the work of God, according to Christ himself. And then in the 37th verse of the 6th chapter, John, he says, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. So we can use the process of negation there and, uh, and very logically conclude that any that the Father has not given him will not come to him. In fact, he goes on and he tells the... Um, some of the Pharisees that he says, you know, you are not my sheep because of you are of your father the devil. Okay? There are two kinds of people that live on the face of the earth. There are, and we used to hear this in old messages way back, there are the goats and there are the sheep. And they're going to be separated one on the left and one on the right. And uh, the sheep are those who hear his voice. Those who are chosen before the foundation of the world uh, that are given to Christ by the Father 
And then there are the goats, or another term would be reprobates, those who are vessels of wrath, uh, fitted for destruction, and they are not going to hear the voice of, of uh, Christ because the fact that they are not his children. And uh, anyway, he says, let's go on here, and it says uh, uh, here in the 44th verse, it says, No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Verse 45, it is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Now, that's not Paul, that's not Peter, that's Christ. I'm going to repeat that again in the 45th verse of the 6th chapter of John. It says, Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. So, again, anyone that doesn't hear, anyone that doesn't learn, um, hasn't been taught of God. And they're not going to come to God. Um, and, and we can see that very evident in throughout uh, this teaching here, that, um, that Christ is very uh, uh, adamant. Let's go back to the 10th chapter of John again. and um, You know, they got pretty upset when he started teaching on the doctrine of election, like a lot of people get upset. You know, it's very palatable to think that we can do something to come to Christ. It's very uh, easy to uh, get in the flesh and think, wow, you know, there's something I did to merit myself to Christ. Anyway, uh, we'll find here that uh, whenever there's an emphasis by Christ upon his power, uh, then these, these particular Jews want to take up stones and start claiming, you know, calling him a devil. Let's look at the 21st chapter. It says, 21st verse. It says, others said, these are not the words of him that hath a devil. Can a devil upon the, open the eyes of the blind? Well, previously, in verse 20, it said, many of them said he hath a devil. And is mad. Why hear ye him? Well, the 25th verse says, Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not the works that I do in my Father's name. They bear witness of me. Verse 26, But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. Verse 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Okay, so, we can, we can uh, very logically conclude then that his sheep don't hear his voice, and they don't follow him. And he said in another passage that, that if you are my sheep, you will do the, you will believe the words. Not only do the things that I tell you, but you will believe the words that I say. Verse 28, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Now the doctrine of Arminianism teaches um, an empty salvation. You know, if you don't do this, if you don't do that, if you do this, if you don't do that, you'll backslide eternally. But for Christ's sheep, even though they may live in disobedience from time to time, they will come to a point of repentance, and they will hear their Father's voice, and they will follow him according to, my sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. And nothing's going to pluck them out of God's hands. Well, when Christ preached on the doctrine of election, you can see what happened. They took up stones against him to stone him. And so, they didn't like the doctrine any more than people like it today. And, uh, you know, so that's uh, amazing, their teaching by Christ on election. Now, we know that Paul taught on election. We know that Peter taught on election. We're not going to get into all those passages today. Uh, there's a passage in Acts that says, As many were ordained to eternal life believed. Uh, so we can actually conclude that those who are not ordained to, to eternal life are not going to believe 
because they're not ordained to eternal life. And so where does that mean that they are ordained to? That means that they are, as it relates to the ninth chapter of Romans, they're vessels of wrath fitted for destruction. And it's an irreversible decree by God, and people get very, very upset about that and say that would make God unfair and that would make God unrighteous and the author of sin and a lot of other things. We may not understand, our finite minds might not understand the decree of God and the purpose of God, but we must wholly rest upon what the Word of God says <clears throat> because if we start changing the Word of God, then we rest it to our own destruction. And so it's very important that we don't go about to establish our own righteousness. You know, that's one of the arguments in the ninth chapter of Romans. It says, is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. <clears throat> and uh, there's a lot of people out there that want to establish their own righteousness and, and uh, through the works of their own hands. We can look at, you know, just briefly at the ninth chapter of Romans. It says that, in verse 10 of the ninth chapter, not only this, but when Rebecca also conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, the children being not yet born, not having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to the election might stand, not a work for of him that calleth. It was said unto her, the old elder shall serve the younger, as is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. And he goes on through the argument there and talks about, in verse 18, that he will have mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will, he hardeneth. And so they go into a diatribe against him. And, and uh, Paul answers and says, Have not the potter power over the clay to make the same lump, to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? And so he even talks about the vessels of wrath fitted for destruction in the next verse, that he might make known his riches of glory on the vessels of mercy, which is he had a four prepared unto glory. In other words, meaning that he had prepared the vessels of mercy before the foundation of the world. There's many passages in the scriptures that back that up, in Ephesians and, and uh, Peter and Revelation that talks about Christ was even slain before the foundation of the world. Yes, he came at a point in time in history and died on the cross, but uh, there was a covenant between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit uh, before this world was created that Christ would come and die for his people. So that gets us started in this uh, little brief discussion about the doctrines of election. You know, we a long-term time had a, an acrostic that many have gone by I don't take on the name of Calvin. I think Calvin was wrong in a lot of areas, especially as it relates to him of baptism. I don't take on the name of uh, any particular uh, person. I think that we are to take on the name of Christ. Christ is our Savior. Christ is the one who died. Christ is the one that, uh, with his Father, chose us before the foundation of the world. And so we don't take on Calvin or Luther. Or, uh, Luther had some good good writings in the bondage of the will. Calvin had some good writings on the providential hand of God as well as predestination. But the acrostic tulip is a good uh, representation of the doctrines of the Bible. Tulip, T stands for total depravity. U stands for unmerited favor. L stands for limited atonement. I like particular redemption a little bit better. I stands for irresistible grace. And P stands for the <coughs> perseverance or the preservation of the saints. I like preservation a little better because we can't persevere unless God preserves us, unless he does the work. He's the author and finisher of our faith. So that's all for today. Uh, we will be uh, coming back on a weekly basis to share some of our thoughts regarding this great doctrine of what Christ has done in effectually calling us and effectually uh, applying his atonement to us, justifying us, and we're seated with him in heavenly places as far as God is concerned for his elect. Have a nice day.